Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be putting back on our on-chain analysis hat and discuss the minor cap to thermal cap ratio, or the minor capitalization divided by thermal capitalization. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We're gonna to try to keep this video somewhat short and sweet. Now, I will say that on-chain analysis is dubious at best, of course, because it could be a, it could theoretically be manipulated. Um, and so we must remember that when talking about on-chain analysis. With that said, I still think that on-chain analysis is useful as long as we keep that in mind. Now, the minor cap to thermal cap ratio is, is an interesting sort of metric to look at. And first of all, I suppose we should define what it is precisely that we're talking about. Okay, now I will say, you know, a lot of times on this channel, we talk about a lot of the same metrics, we look at the markets using several different indicators, but we tend to recycle a lot of those indicators and make updates to those indicators, you know, every couple of weeks or so. But I do want to do a better job of, of trying to incorporate some other types of indicators and metrics just to give us a more holistic view of the market. The minor cap to thermal cap ratio is, is a ratio that, well, let's, let's first define what it is we're talking about. Okay, so... When a miner successfully mines a block, we know that they are re rewarded with newly minted Bitcoin, okay? Now, and that's called the block subsidy. Now, if you add that up with the transaction fees in that block, you get something known as the miner's revenue. The all-time cumulative miner revenue is called the thermal cap, and it's calculated by taking the running sum of daily miner revenue in USD. So that is how you calculate out the thermal cap. The minor cap, the minor capitalization is equal to the sum of balances of all mining entities multiplied by the price of that day. It says a mining entity is an address that receives newly issued supply or transaction fees. So we're basically just looking at the minor cap divided by the thermo cap. So we're looking essentially at these two things, the minor cap and the thermo cap. That's what we're looking at. So we're looking at that ratio. Okay. Now, if we go on here and we look at this ratio, you'll notice a couple of things. The first thing you might notice is that we see diminishing returns from one cycle to another in this ratio. Okay, so yes, we've seen diminishing returns from one bull market to another with Bitcoin, which was a very controversial view last cycle, right? You know, it was a very controversial view, but it's still we still have experienced diminishing returns from one cycle to another, even with this ratio. But we've also seen diminishing losses from one cycle to another. If you sort of just hover above each low, you can see that each low is higher, or sorry, each this initial low is lower than the lows that came in the cycle after that, and those lows are lower than this cycle, and then those lows are lower than this cycle. So we have seen diminishing losses in this ratio as well. But then another observation would be to say that while it did not occur over here in this first cycle, in the second cycle, you can actually see that that test of that level of that initial low, we revisited that later on when Bitcoin got a double bottom. And we actually went slightly lower on the minor cap to thermal cap ratio, just sort of drawing the line across. We actually went slightly lower on that ratio. The next cycle, if we sort of hover across this line, you can see that we sort of double tapped this level and then we touched that level again all the way back out in March of 2020. So in, in 2015, we sort of hit this low in January, and then about seven months later, we hit it again in August. Last cycle, we hit these lows in December and in February, and then we hit it again in March of 2020. So from February to 2019, February 2019, this was about 13 months later. If you measure it from December, of course, it's more, you know, we're talking about 14, 15 months out. But regardless, what you'll notice is we get diminishing ROI of this metric from one cycle to another. You can even imagine sort of drawing an imaginary trend line through these peaks. But you can also see that we get diminishing losses from one cycle to another of this metric. But we also tend to hit a low and then retest it later. Now, in 2015, it corresponded to a double bottom. In 2020, it corresponded to a higher low. But it is interesting that this is the level that we ultimately back tested with this ratio. It kind of goes back to that, that chart we talked about yesterday, the stable coin supply ratio, because there was a lot of interesting ways that we could look at the market using that chart and how 2019 and 2023 
the, the stable coin supply ratio oscillator topped out at the same level. And after a lot of these major tops, they then bottom at a very similar level. And so I wonder if this metric would be useful in identifying where the secondary scare of Bitcoin terminates, just like it identified it when it terminated in 2020, it corresponding to just this prior these prior lows over here, and it identified it in 2015 when we basically took out, you know, just sort of swept these lows over here on this ratio. So just one more indicator to sort of add to your toolkit. I'm not saying that you should take it to the bank, but it is an interesting way to in fact view the market. And again, a reminder, we do have a lot of charts on the website. I know I do recycle the same, you know, the same ones quite frequently, um, but we have quite a bit and, and I'll, I'll hopefully try to do a better job of, of going through some of those metrics more frequently and, and trying to include, you know, one or two new charts, um, hopefully every week or every couple of weeks or so, just so we're keeping the analysis fresh and we're looking at the market in, in other ways rather than rather than the same way we've looked at it that way it'll at least keep the the analysis somewhat lively especially as the social risk continues to diminish and no one really cares anymore but anyways we're we'll wrapping up there thank you guys for tuning in make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed again check out the sale on into the cryptoverse premium and i'll see you guys again next time bye